Welcome back to Deb's Big Backyard on the Road. I'm Deb, and you know, on my bucket list has always been to learn how to tap a maple tree for its syrup. I never thought I would learn how to do it right here in Oak Park. I've met two women who are currently tapping the trees in their front and backyard. Let's go meet them. Hey, Margo, how you doing? Hi, Deb, nice to see you. Thanks yeah, for coming I love by. Your, love your backyard where the chickens are out and the dogs are here and all of nature. What are you doing here today? Well, we're gonna tap this maple tree. The spile that I have needs a hole about an inch and a half, so I've put a piece of tape there. Okay. That's level, I wanna tip it up a little and drill. This does not hurt the tree. Okay. This goes through the loop. Okay. Goes in there, and then I'll tap it lightly. On a warm day, you can do this, not a cold day. That secures it so that I can hang the bucket off of the spile. So, so what'll happen, uh, Margo, if you are doing this on a cold day? Why shouldn't you do it on a cold day? On a cold day, the, the wood itself is cold and it can split. And then the sap will run down the tree rather than out the spile. So how in the heck did you get into tapping a maple tree in your front yard in Oak Park? I wish I had a good answer for that. I just think that, I mean, I knew that, that you could get sap from any maple tree. This is a silver. This tree's been awesome for that. Last year we got 40 gallons from this one tree and 40 gallons of sap, not 40 gallons of syrup. Syrup, right. syrup we got quite a bit less. I'm looking in here, Katie, and to me it looks like water. <laughs> it does look like water. It looks exactly like water. And there's a lot of water in it, which is why you have to boil it for so long to boil off the water to get the maple syrup. But that too is kind of fun, sitting in the back with the heater going and, and um, the, the stuff bubbling away, very cauldron-like, so it's good. We're boiling down the sap. 50 parts end up one part of syrup. I've boiled a little bit here that we uh, just pulled out of the tree for Deb to taste. This is sap. You can see it's got a little bit of color to it. And it's filled with minerals, uh, magnesium, manganese, calcium, uh, iron. It's very, very good for you. Ooh, is it a little hot? Should I wait a little bit? Well, I'll blow on it. So this is, this is, this is syrup, right? This is tree sap. This is tree sap. I've boiled it just to take any impurities out. It has the um, qualities of milk. So you've got to wow. make sure that you freeze it or refrigerate it. It's, it's like, wow, you know, it, it's sweet, but not over sweet. And I can, I can feel the milk quality that you're talking about. It's got a little kind of creamy. It does. A uh, vanilla flavor at the end. Yeah, I, I need to take another taste now that you put that in my head. So. The more you boil the water out, the sweeter it becomes. This is the tail end of the boiling down point. All right. Geez, that didn't so take very long at all. You got to, we, I just looked away for a moment. But you see how it pours off of the spoon. If you continue to boil down the syrup, you'll make maple candy. Deb, would you like to try some? I sure would. I'd like to see the difference between the sap and then the, the product here. Yep, that would go on my pancakes. Three quarter cup of maple syrup replaces one cup of sugar. Okay. Sugar is coming from the tropics, so we have lots of mm -hmm. gasoline that brings it here where we have a vertical fountain of sugary water in our yards and we can use it right here in Oak Park. So a little birdie told me that you're not only gonna make syrup this year, but you're gonna be doing something else with that sap. Right, this year I'm gonna to try to use it to make beer because I've been, I, I make beer and you need water for your beer. So this year instead of the place of the water, I'm gonna try the sap and I'll change the recipe a little bit. We'll see how it comes out. I mean, it could be really an awful thing, but it's fun to try. The tree's over here. Okay. The silver maple tree is in your front yard, mm -hmm. and you've been tapping this. Is this the one you started with in your yard, or did you do them both? This is the one that we've tapped for 15 years. That's what I figured. You have to really pay attention, right? Well, it varies every year. It sounds like it sounds like, like we've it's had a science, two... but it's not a. It's a yes. science, but you have it's to. It's an art. Kinda... It's actually an art. There you go. <laughs> um, because our February was too cold to tap. Yeah. Usually, that's the best month to tap in Illinois, mm -hmm. but it was way too cold. So now we're into March for starting. Mm -hmm. on the other tree. Mm -hmm. And when the weather gets to be 40 to 50 degrees during the day and 30 degrees at night, that's tapping season. 
So what do you think, Katie? It seems like you're not afraid to try anything new as far when it comes to the garden and the natural world. Mm -hmm. So about tapping a tree, do you think anyone could do it? Oh, I hope everyone does it. It's really fun. They're, it's just fun. I mean, yeah. So when's a good time to do this? Today's the day, wow. this week. <laughs> you could go to tapmytree.com, get the spile, um, a bucket from Dressel's Hardware, and you'll be set up by the weekend. Oh my goodness. Hey, let's do it. This has been Deb's Big Backyard on the Road. I'm Deb. I'm Margo. See you next time.